Attention, attention. Are you tired of expensive, low quality web service providers? And are you looking for stunning, amazing, high quality websites? And want your website rank on first page of Google? So, you have to ask me Please contact People Inc. on 510 449 9049. Or visit them at www.beerbills.com. Beerbills Inc. offers award-winning custom-built websites, web and mobile application development, and internet marketing services. So contact KJ Beerbills Inc. 510-449-9049. You satisfy karna aur hard work karna. Yehi Beerbills Inc. Ka maksad hai. The new novel, The Immigration Lawyer Asylum has something for everyone, drama and romance. The story is inspired by a true story about a man from Iraq who is a suspected terrorist and wrongfully held by the U.S. immigration. The story is centered on the immigration lawyer, Sarah, who handles the case and describes the entire immigration process to obtain his freedom. The story goes in great depth on filing immigration petitions. If you're a reader who wants to curl up with a book about immigration matters and human rights, visit Amazon.com to buy. Visit www.splgpc.com. Call 510-742-5887. If you own a property and have a second mortgage on it, and if you want to keep this property and get rid of the second loan, attorney Shaw Perali can help. Call 510-742-5887. Due to the uncertain economy, many people have settled their debts for a fraction of its value. It's recommended to use an experienced lawyer to deal with it. Shaw Perali is an experienced debt settlement attorney and has handled hundreds of such cases successfully. There are no upfront fees for debt settlement. Only when you win, you pay. Call Shaw Perali, attorney at law, at 510-742-5887 or visit yourdebtsettlementattorney.com for a free assessment. This is just an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is established by this ad. The law does not guarantee success. Call 510-742-5887. You came over to provide for your family, to give your kids a bright future. However, an immigrant faces certain parallels while trying to achieve the American dream. The Shaw Perali Law Group PC is here to be a friend on your side. Whether you're dealing with an H-1B visa or trying to become a citizen, no matter the issue, the Shaw Perali Law Group PC can help. Their diverse, multilingual staff offer a systematic, responsive, team-oriented approach to give you the best effective and exceptional quality service you deserve in your time of need. The Shaw Perali Law Group PC is not only made a name for excellence and dedication, but is also renowned for its compassion and social work, including pro bono workshops, awareness campaigns, human and civil rights advocacy. Please call 510-742-5887 to set up an appointment for a consultation. Don't wait. The members of the Shop Raleigh Law Group PC are ready to work for you. That's 510-742-5887. This is just an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship has been established. The law firm does not guarantee success. If you would like to find out how you can get out of your debts without having to file for bankruptcy, call 510-742-5887. Due to the uncertain economy, many people have settled their debts for a fraction of its value. It's recommended to use an experienced lawyer to deal with it. Shaw Perali is an experienced debt settlement attorney and has handled hundreds of such cases successfully. There are no upfront fees for debt settlement. Only when you win, you pay. Call Shaw Perali, attorney at law, at 510-742-5887 or visit yourdebtsettlementattorney.com for a free assessment. This is just an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is established by this ad. The law does not guarantee success. Call 510-742-5887. Check out the Shaw Perali Law Show every Monday at noon and every Thursday at 10 a.m. where Shaw will discuss various immigration topics, provide news on immigration, and take your phone calls live. 
Only on Daisy 1170 AM. And now, from the San Francisco Bay Area Studios, KLOK proudly presents to you the prominent attorney Shaw Perelli for the Shaw Perelli Law Show, coming at you with over 50,000 watts of power. The Shaw Perelli Law Show, where all your views matter. Hello, 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 everybody. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Khan. Namaskar to all the listeners. And this is the Sharp Rai Law Show. And today I have on the on the board with me Liz. And we're going to talk about different topics, a lot of things happening in immigration, but also talk about a uh, few things uh, that are happening in the current uh, situation. So um, bear with us today. We are going to talk. Uh, we're going to start taking the call in five minutes. The number to call to the studio. Four zero eight nine one two five five six five, and just to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, everything I tell you today is my opinion, and uh, you should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. Feel free to call us at five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. Uh, to start with, of course, we we are sad with the situation in Texas. Uh, what has happened? But at the same time, uh, it seems like um, there is a rise in, in terms of heat. And uh, there was an exposition where someone was uh, portrayed uh, the Prophet Muhammad, which is a very res- who is a very respectful person for in our community. And, and that person is going on a spree of Islamophobia, which basically is encouraging heat towards one community. And, uh, and now um, it has led to violence, and this is very sad. Unfortunately, the people who who attacked probably played in her game, and uh, I, I blame both sides. But uh, at the same time, she has been going on a spree and um, and uh, just to get attention. And I was listening to someone today from the poverty uh, institution and who was saying that she has a reputation. Uh, this lady who who started that exposition in Texas to create uh, heat uh, amongst people. So let us look at the truth, and then hopefully uh, people will see the truth that you don't create hate between communities. We, live, we need to live in peace. We are one one country, and everybody has to live in peace. So that was my two cents on this situation first. I wanted to mention that. Now let us talk a little bit about about uh, what's happening on the immigration side. Um, a few things very important on the immigration side. For one, we have uh, we have this big thing that now everybody is talking about, the H-1B amendment that need, is required after the case of matter of Saimiyo Solutions LLC. Um, this basically says something that we have been saying a lot, um, all the time. Whenever you're moving your candidate, especially if you're an IT consulting firm, whenever you're moving your candidate to a different geographical area where an LCA is required, uh, now the court, the administrative appeal actually, is calling for for um, for what we call an amendment of the H-1B. Before, some people will stick only to do an LCA, but now they're asking for a full amendment. And uh, this is what the two ruling came, the ruling that came on this case. The case was decided on April 9, and it's making. And you can see a copy of the of the case on uh, on one of our blogs, splawforum.com/blog. And we posted it there. Uh, the, the case is matter of Saimio Solutions LLC. And um, the problem with this is uh, actually it seems like the AEO has kind of departed actually from from the real thing. They have looked into into that entire process without really analyzing what the CFR says. So I, I'm, I'm hoping there will be litigation on this. And uh, for those who can file in federal court who dare to file. We hope that we can reverse that because the, it's not really what the law says, although we have always recommended our clients to do an amendment petition. So make sure if you're moving from one geographical area to another, you still uh, go ahead and get your your um, your amendment on the H-1B. However, there's a note in that, uh, note 7, which says this interpretation does not depart from the past policy pronouncement that the mere transfer of the beneficiary to another work site in the same occupation does not require the filing of an amended petition, provided the initial petitioner remains the alien's employer 
and provided further the supporting labor condition applications remains valid. So the problem here is um, how it's going to be interpreted and to be on the safe side, people are going to be, of course, be worried. So they will want to actually have uh, an amended petition. So now the question, will they uh, make that law retroactive? That means basically, are they going to go back and go to all those people who have not done, done an amendment? Are they going to deny their cases or, or revoke the H-1B? So we have, this is left to, to be seen. And if this, uh, that's the case, I think at this point, and I've seen a lot of lawyers are agreeing with me on that, saying that um, at this point there should be lawsuits and litigation in federal court about this. By the way, uh, for those who don't know, if an H-1B is denied, you can go to federal court and fight them. You don't really have to appeal directly with the, with the immigration, which is, uh, um, which is something good because some cases you cannot go to federal court. And I, rec- I recommend people should go to federal court sometimes because uh, some cases are very unfair when they are denied. So we're going to talk about this, but of course you can call for any questions. We have also the H4 look. <coughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Just came back on the flu. Um, we have also the federal law of H4 EAD coming out, and uh, we we recommend that you get ready, even though there's a lawsuit that doesn't seem that lawsuit is affecting anything at this point. So you can still apply. Well, not apply, but get ready for it. You can apply only on May 26th. So Please give us a call if you need help at uh, 510-742-5887. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be taking the callers. You can call 408-912-5565, 408-912-5565, and uh, you can ask any questions on immigration. Uh, feel free to ask. Um, we will be talking and uh, until we get the calls. I, I kind of block a little bit the time because I wanted to discuss uh, uh, and uh, um, we will be okay with uh, with uh, taking the calls, uh, but at the same time, I'm going to talk a little bit about all the issues on immigration. Um, the truth is, we have so many uh, uh, things going on on immigration right now: lawsuits, um, people who are really into into uh, situations where they don't know. I need to do one G is one problem. Uh, cases are getting delayed and that right now the immigration side of the H-1B one thing which is happening now also it seems like there is a department which is going and checking on all the H-1Bs especially many people offering the end client letters and things like that so they are going they have this new fraud unit now uh, I think it's business and documents uh, fraud unit where they are going and making sure that uh, all those stuff are, are real let me take one caller this is Shop Ray you're live in here Hey. Hello. Uh, hey, Hi. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, yes, sir. Like I have a question regarding my H-1B. Uh, mm-hmm. So my H-1B got filed this year, and it is up mm-hmm. I got a premium processing, so uh, my application got approved last Friday. Uh-huh. Congratulations. And, uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, and then, like, uh, so I'm on OPT right now, and I'm working with my current employer who filed my H-1B. And meanwhile, um, like, uh, there, I, there is uh, one more job offer that I'm going to get. Uh, it's uh, like full time. Is there any way yes. that I can uh, start working with them? Uh, so, how can I transfer my H1B before October 1st? And is there any risky that I, uh, I'm going to face? And I'm like, uh, so can I start working with them if, uh, on OPD and then, like, from October 1st on H1B, can I start with them? Well, it is it is possible. You can go work on the OPT with that new employer, but if you want to continue with that new employer down the road, you have to do what we call an H-1B transfer. Uh, you, I don't, I don't recommend doing it now. Uh, do it. Uh, you can still you, you can do it before October first, but it's not recommended. And it's a case by case basis. Sometimes I will not advise people to do that because of the situation. You don't want to. The biggest problem that we are facing now, if they look at the first H-1B as something who just got you inside the door, then they might uh, not be happy with it. So it's very hard to tell you yes or no, but it is doable. Uh, You can move to the other employer and you can even transfer the H-1B. But be very careful how you do that. If you want me to kind of to assess like 
based on the company, etc., just give me a call at the office. I'll do that for you. But just be careful before you move. You don't want to jeopardize that H-1B and they start uh, thinking that you just tried to get in and now you get in, you're moving to something else, okay? All right? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Good luck to you. The number to our office, 510-742-5887. Uh, let me take another caller. This is Shah Ali. You're live in here. Hi, Shah. My name is Shree from San Jose. I have a question. Uh, so the thing is, I've been hearing a lot about this uh, uh, new uh, EAD uh, bill that is going to come. I mean, bill or some, some news that's going to come out today and stuff. Uh, is there any way you can give me some light about it? The H4 EAD? No, not the H4 EAD. There is some uh, bill, uh, thing about the I-140s getting... I-140 approved uh, uh, persons are also will be eligible for getting EAD. Yeah, I think the law is not is not yet passed. I didn't see anything yet, uh, but as soon as I see it, I'll post it. But I think they had a proposition on HR uh, on the Congress, but so far I have not seen Congress coming up with anything. Um, the truth is that um, not many people are expecting a lot from Congress. So I hope it passed, but uh, I don't think, I didn't really follow it because I've seen too many of those bills going into Congress and getting rejected. But um, until I, I find it, I know there was a bill that proposed the I-140. Those who have an I-140 approved will be eligible to file for an EAD. But uh, I have not seen anything yet which says it is law. So maybe on my next show I'll do some research and I'll talk about that. But right now I don't want to comment. Because I, I can tell you right now, when you look at Congress, they have bills pretty much running on a daily basis. And so far, no immigration bill has come out of there, which is in favor of immigrants. So. Uh, I'm I'm kind of skeptical. Until I see Obama signing it into law, I will not really kind of uh, tell people because uh, it's very hard sometimes. You tell people and then they come back and they say, oh, you said that, but it's not law yet. So let us wait a little bit. But I know there was a, some good push on the Congress to do something, but so far they have not done anything. Okay? And then one right. last question. So yes, when ahead, you get ahead. an EAD... Can you can you just let me know like when you get an EAD like when you can work for any employer or do like any other thing or any what what are the rules for like yeah it depends depend on how the EAD is attached to what like the H4 EAD yes you can work for any employer there's no limitation on it but depending how they craft the law uh, there there's a one EAD which is obtained based on on, on adjustment of status uh, this one yeah you can work pretty much for any employer. But there are some EADs like OPT and things like that. You have to at least inform the the school and the immigration that you're moving employer. So it depends how they craft it because they can put limitations on them. Like for example, on the H4, they have limitation on the form, but not on the on the EAD itself. So uh, it's it's case by case. For example, on the H4, it's attached to the H4 visa. So the H4 visa dies, you, it dies with it. But they have not put any limitation on the work. But usually an EAD pretty much gives you a lot of flexibility. You can work for any employer, yes. Okay, okay. thank you. Thanks. Okay, good luck to you. Let me take another caller. This is Shapra. You are live in here. Hi, Shapra. Uh, thank you for Hi. all your information. Uh, I have one no question about the uh, yeah, current quota H-1B. Uh, my wife's H-1B got picked up in the lottery. And uh, oh, uh, she uh, wants to travel uh, to India, maybe somewhere in uh, June, July. So it is advisable to travel before approval uh, out of the uh, uh, United States? Well, it doesn't change anything before or after. The only problem it will change, if she travels, it kind of, if she's doing a change of status, that change of, uh, let's say she travels on H4. Uh, I, 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 I am making the assumption she's on H4, right? Yeah, she so is on H4. Let's, let's, let's say she comes back on H4. Uh, technically, because she travels, it kind of kills the I-94. When she comes back, she gets a new I-94, kind of. Uh, the change of status that you did on the H-1 uh, might not be a good one. You might have to amend the H-1B, or you might have to leave and come back on the H-1. So either it's before or after approval, the rule is the same. So in this case, you need to be very careful. If you did a change of status and you're leaving, and you're coming back, you might have to at least do an amendment or leave again and come back on the H1, get a stamp of H1 and come back, okay? Okay, okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot.
Okay. And good luck to you. And if you need help, 510-742-5887. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for all the call. You can still call the number to the studio line is open, 408-912-5565. Let me take another call. This is Shapra. You're live in here. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello? Hi. Hi. I have a question regarding uh, an H1 transfer. A friend of mine is in mm-hmm. India. She was here mm-hmm. on an H1 and then she went back. Uh, mm-hmm. And if, uh, so now, uh, how can she get that transfer? So she's not working with that. Uh, I don't think if, she, uh, if she's working with that company still. I don't think she's working with that company anymore. The H1 mm-hmm. is still there, but uh, uh, can she get a transfer? Okay, so you're saying that she's working for a company. She left the country. She went to another. She went to India, which yeah. country she's in. And now she's, she got another job with another company, and she wants to come back. Does she have a stamp on her passport? Uh, yes. Okay. All but she has to do is a transfer of of of, uh, of employment, and basically, okay. if she has time on her H one B, she does that. Once it gets approved, she doesn't have to be here. Uh, do it by premium. Once she gets approved, she doesn't. If she has a stamp on her passport, she doesn't even need a new stamp. If that stamp is okay. still valid, she just come back okay. at the airport and they will give her I ninety four. That's it. Okay, but uh, I think her uh, the stamp on that expired in twenty twelve. Oh, then she needs to go and get a new stamp. But she can still transfer. Whenever you're doing a transfer, it's a two part process in one. The first part is a transfer of employment. You're basically saying to the USCIS, hey. I am in the H-1B quota, so I am cap exempt. Give me another, uh, give me, transfer me to this new job. And if you're in status, you're inside the U.S., you can just transfer the status to That's the second part. But oh. if you're outside or you're out of status, you can still request to transfer the job or give you okay. another new job with uh, okay. basically cap exempt. Only difference right. is this time you have to, once it's approved, the 797, she just has to go to the U.S. consulate, get her stamp, and come back. That's it. Okay. If she had so a stamp, just, she can still use the same. Okay. So I have to look for a company that will do an H-1 transfer then? Definitely. Yeah, you have to. Once they do the okay. transfer, then you can bring her back. Okay? Well, Good luck you to so you. Much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, mm-hmm. If you need help, just give me a call. 510-742-5887. Let me take another call. This is Shah Prali. You'll have an ear. Hey, uh, Shafir, uh, first of all, uh, you know, congratulations. You are doing a great job. Uh, oh, thank you, sir. I have a quick question. Uh, uh, I got my green card, though, about one and a half year back. But, uh-huh. uh, you know, to start with, I had EB3, and it was taking long. So I had uh, converted to EB2 through my friend's company uh, as a future uh, employ- employment. And uh, it's about one and a half year now, though I have not joined. Uh, just wondering, you know, some people say, you know, you need not bother. Some people say, you know, it's better, you know, you uh, join them for a few months at least. So I uh, would like to suggest, so I say, you know, what should I do? Okay. I, I didn't understand your question, but you basically worried about now. But you already got the green card. It's been one and a half year. Did you work for your friend's company? No, I didn't work, yeah. Because if I, is that nothing to worry, or should I, uh, not going forward for citizenship, does it matter? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, unless you did an AC21 before you get the green card, yeah. You might want to worry about that. <laughs> Give me a call at the office. Don't discuss that too much on the radio. Um, let us talk about it. But there might be some issues that you need to, to be dealing with uh, in the future. But it might not also come. But I have to look at all the facts. So give me a call. We can talk privately about that. 510-742-5887. Okay? Thank okay, you. But there, there might be some issues. Let me just tell you the general rule. Whenever you're doing a green card with a company, before the green card is approved, if you're in a pending stage of the AOS, the adjustment of status, you can you can change the company because then at this point you're under AC21. But once you get the green card and uh, you move right away, they look at it very suspiciously, thinking that you just did that to get a green card. So that doesn't mean that they, every case they will look at it this way. But you have to show the genuineness of the need uh, of hiring you. So this is where it becomes a problem. And people just think it's a rule of working six months or one year. It's not about that. It's about showing that the offer was a genuine offer. So and it might be a problem. It might not be a problem at all. So it's a case-by-case basis. So there's no general rule. It's just looking at the totality of circumstances. Okay? 
Uh, give me a call. I will talk in more details because you don't want to discuss personal stuff on, on the radio like that. Okay? Let me take another caller. This is Shapra. You are live in here. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey, Mr. Shah, this is Gopi from Fremont. <clears throat> hey, uh, Gopi, first of all, I appreciate all the effort that you're putting. Uh, you know, you have put in to get the H4 EAD. Uh, oh, thank I, you so I, much. Many people have, uh, you know, like got advantage on that. I have a question regarding my wife. Mm -hmm. So she has recently finished her master's and uh, she has applied for uh, uh, OPD EAD. Uh, mm -hmm. My question is, uh, can she travel abroad uh, when she's on OPD EAD? Okay, the EAD under the OPT is not a status. The status is still student visa, okay, because the OPT is attached to the student visa. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the answer is yes, you can travel. The problem is they give you a hard time often when you're coming back. Uh, but you have to have a letter of employment. If you have a strong letter of employment, you're coming back they will not really give you such a hard time. I, I usually don't recommend people traveling on the OPT because I've seen too many people getting stuck at the airport. But the law says, yes, you can travel. Many people do travel without any problem if they have a strong job offer and they're working and they're maintaining the OPT. It's just it's not recommended to travel. But yes, she can travel, okay? Yeah, because uh, the main question is actually uh, she came to U.S. on H-4 and uh, uh, we made... Uh, change the status from H4 to F1 in U.S., and she has not mm -hmm. been to India or anywhere, and so she doesn't oh, have okay, any visa okay. stamped on, a, oh, on her okay, okay. Yeah, then, then she will need to go and get the student visa uh, step. So her only way to travel is to travel in the H4, but if she travels in the H4, guess what? The OPT dies. So, um, no, don't let her travel right now. I don't recommend it, okay? Yeah, so... Uh, Okay, I'm on H1 right now, so I'm thinking that uh, probably it would be a good idea to transfer her to H4 before we leave, if we need to leave, and then uh, get her back on H4. No, no, you don't have to transfer her. If she's going to come back on H4, you're just going to waste your money to transfer on H4. Let her enjoy the OPT as much as possible. When she leaves, H4 is not like H1B. You don't have to file anything here. You just go ahead and file it directly at the... If she has a stamp on her passport H4, you don't even have to file anything. But if you don't have a stamp of H4, she just goes and get her stamp of H4. When she comes back, she'll get her I-94. Don't waste your money doing a change of status right now. Just do it directly with the U.S. consulate, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, good luck to you. Let me take another caller. This is Sharp Rai. You're live in here. I have Hello. a question about applying citizenship for my elderly parent. Yes, uh, sir, I'm listening to you. Is there, a, is there a way to get an exemption for the English and physics test? Yeah, there are a few ways. One of them, I think, is a 10-year, uh, I always kind of mess, forget it. It's 10-year green card and above 65, I think. And I think 15 years and above 60 or the other way around. Uh, it is on my website. I always kind of confuse them. Uh, and oh. then there's another, This you get exemption only for the English. She will still have to take the civic test, but in your natal language, either it is Punjabi, Hindi, Telugu, or Tamil, you can you can do that. But now if she cannot study at all and she has some mental uh, problems, not mental, but she cannot remember uh, and you get a doctor uh, basically certifying of this, you can kind of waive the entire process and go straight to the citizenship. But just to let people know, this is not an easy process and oftentimes they don't, uh, they used to give it very liberally, now they are very strict on those. So. Um, just, uh, yeah, these are options, but yes, it is available. Uh, the only problem is, like, um, many people um, don't don't take advantage of it or they don't know about it, that's all. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. If you need help on those, give me a call, 510-742-5887. Let me take another caller. This is Shapira, you're live in here. Yeah, hello. Hello, how are you? Yeah, hi, Shah. Yeah, this is Arjun. Hi, hi Arjun, how are yeah. you? Yeah, good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Yeah. What can I do yeah, for you, sir? Yeah, I have a question. Like uh, my wife, she was, uh, she got a, uh, she got H1B in last year quota, and uh, right mm -hmm. now, uh, we sent a like a we. I mean, I'm planning to terminate uh, her H1B and convert into H4 back. Mm hmm. And her visa got uh, her visa stamping got expired last year, and she's planning uh -huh. to visit India this month. 
So is it recommendable like uh, to visit uh, India until we get a confirmation of our H-1B termination as well as change of status back to H-4? Or do we need to wait no. until we get the approval? No, no, no. You don't have to. But just make sure that she maintains status on the H-1. You don't even have to do that. This is why people, are, I'm expla I explained to the previous caller, whenever you, are, you, are, you, you want an H-4, if you're leaving the country, don't waste your time to do a change of status because you're just wasting your money and putting stress on you. Leave the country anyway, and then if you have a stamp of H-4, you can just come back. Or yeah. just go ahead and get a stamp on the H-4. So as soon as you leave, this, this status dies, uh, you will have to reapply for it anyway. So there's no purpose to wait on it and then go. Uh, oh. But having said that, make sure that she maintains uh, her status on H1 so that they don't claim that she lost status for more than 180 but, days. Then yeah, she might have a problem. But spent uh, for termination of H1B. You have, doesn't matter termination of h one When did she get her termination of H1B? Uh, no, we sent on March 6th, but till now we did not receive any confirmation. We just got okay. a little bit. Well, you uh, still have, you still, as case. long as she, she leaves before 180 days, she's fine. As long as she leaves the country before 180 days, she can just go and get her stamp of H4 and come back. So just go ahead, and if you're a little bit confused, give me a call at the office. I'll guide you how to do it. But don't waste your money. Oh, you already did it now. It's too late. But it won't serve anything because as soon as she leaves, that status will die. So as long as you, you respect the 180 days, you can leave and come back, okay? Okay. All right, thanks. Okay, good luck to you. And uh, I have one more call, and then we'll take a break. This is Sharp Rai. You're live in here. Yes, I have a question. Yes. For my mother's green card, my sister is a citizen, and she has applied for her green card while my mom is in India. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I lost my dad in March. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry um, how does this work? I mean, is there a way at some stage we can get her to U.S. or we still have to wait till we get the green card only, then she can enter U.S.? <laughs> well, yes and no. Um, bottom line, it doesn't take that long usually to get the parents here. It takes like eight months. So if you already started the process, it's always good to go ahead. But if she has a visitor visa, let's say she had a visitor visa, she comes here, you don't have to let her go. You can get the green card from here itself. But don't I don't advise people now, after you file for the green card, to go and file for the visitor visa. They will probably deny it and give you a hard time. But if she already has it, then give me a call at the office. I can guide you. We have a good article on this on our website. She has a visitor just... visa already, and we applied for her okay. green card, I mean, fortunately, in November. Okay. So let's say now she comes and visits you while in the process, and they don't do anything to her at the airport. You can, if she decides to stay after 60 days, you can go ahead and file for a green card right here. You don't have to let her go back. Um, the problem is that if you, now you know about this and you do that intentionally, then they will um, come back and say you committed fraud. The way it works is, is the no, intention. No, 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 I mean, we didn't know. I mean, this is totally unfortunate that uh, we had applied for her green card just like that in November. And I lost my dad yeah. in March this year. So oh, okay. Well, if it is an emergency, let her let her come here. No intention of applying for the green card. Once she's here, then give me a call. I'll guide you what needs to do next. Let her come here on the visitor visa to visit you and explain. Uh, give me a call at the office. Uh, I can kind of guide you because these are very uh, sensitive stuff. You don't want to discuss it too much on the on the radio. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. Good luck to you. But you can read the article to get more information it's on our website. It's called Adjustment of Status from B1, B2 Visa. And uh, it will give you all the law there. Okay? Okay. okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. So, you can keep calling 408-912-5565. We're going to take a quick break, and then we will be back after those messages. And uh, we don't go anywhere. This is Attorney Sharp Rally with Liz on the board today and discussing about immigration law. Anything I told you today, ladies and gentlemen, is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. We are talking about immigration law. We'll be back after those messages. Is your credit card debt driving you insane? Don't panic and claim bankruptcy. Don't consolidate and end up worse off than before. What you need to do is call the debt settlement team at the Shop Crowley Law Group PC. They have an excellent record of getting your debt reduced at a fraction of what you owe. The best part is you don't pay a penny until a settlement is reached. 
Stop wasting time and money and call the Shop Raleigh Law Group PC at 510-742-5887. That's 510-742-5887. Get out of debt now. This is just an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is created by this ad. The law firm does not guarantee success. The new Attorney On Air app is now available to download on your iPhone or Android. Get access to the latest information and interact on the immigration and debt settlement blocks. That's not all. The app has plenty of entertainment as well. Listen live to the Shaw Perelli Law radio shows. Go to www.attorneyonair.com to download it for free. Yes, that's right, for free at www.attorneyonair.com. He has given you advice on immigration issues on the radio. He has brought you those same issues to the big screen. And now the man who's been looking out for your well-being brings you the story of a man exiled from his home country only to find out how much worse his life becomes, seeking refuge in his new one. Shaw Perali presents the Immigration Lawyer Asylum. Learn how one immigrant's trial and tribulations trying to attain political asylum turns out to be a nightmare he never could have imagined. Read about the courageous immigration lawyers and their fight to help others gain their courage to raise their voices against injustice. Shaw Pirelli's The Immigration Lawyer Asylum. Get the book available now on paperback at Amazon.com. Check out the Shaw Pirelli Law Show every Monday at noon and every Thursday at 10 a.m. where Shaw will discuss various immigration topics, provide news on immigration, and take your phone calls live. Only on Daisy 1170 a.m. And now, uh, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the Sharp Rye Law Show. We were talking about immigration, and we'll still be talking about immigration. The number to call to the studio is 408-912-5565. And 408-912-5565, we have been talking a lot about different issues, including H1, H4 issues, and also family petitions. And uh, oftentimes, I will tell people not to discuss their cases when uh, it, it has some component of issues that can lead to wrong um, wrong interpretation. So since this is a public forum, be very careful. I don't, uh, if you're giving us details, don't prefer you not to give your name and things like that. And, of course, uh, if you have any questions, the number to the studio, 408-912-5565. At the beginning of the show, we were talking a little bit about, of course, um, uh, the new rule that came from the Administrative Appeal Office, which uh, many lawyers are thinking will open the door for a lot of litigation now, because they are requesting basically everybody who's changing. Uh, for example, you're working for a company. Even you're working for a big company, oftentimes now they're placing people on site to work on, on, on cases, So, I mean, on, on their projects. And then because of that, they're requesting a full amendment of the H-1B petition, not just the LCA. So. Uh, this is going to develop really fast, and we'll see how it unfolds. But it's kind of unfair the way they are they're placing it. Let me take another caller. This is Shafra. You alive in here? Hello. 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 Uh, uh, okay. no, I mean, uh, Mr. Shah, I mean, uh, thanks for the great show. I have a question. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, go ahead. I'm listening. So, um, uh, the thing is, I have a I one forty approved, and um, uh, I'm applying. I'm trying to apply. For my wife, uh, she's on H4 uh, yeah. for EAD. So, uh, what is the procedure to, uh, you know, apply? Um, I have no idea how to apply. Uh, uh, and I have such, yeah, okay. We can we can help you actually on those because the form is going to be a little bit tricky. It's a new form that's going to come out soon. A lot of people calling me. Oh, I don't see. Uh, the form is going to be a little bit different. Uh, but uh, what basically you have to put is file the EAD form. And uh, you have to show proof that you're married, and you have to put a copy of your I-140. And uh, I think, from my perspective, there will be a lot of cases where if you don't put enough information to prove your marriage, it will be. We have a special uh, uh, site for this. It's called H4 to EAD. H4 to EAD. H4 T O E A D dot com. It kind of gives a lot of guides as much as possible on this. But um, at the same time, if you need help, we're not charging much to do those cases. You can give me a call at the office. I'll be glad to handle it for you. 510-742-5887. 
But uh, if you go on this website, you might get some guidance, but the forms are not going to be there because it's not yet out, okay? All right? Okay, thank you so much. So when is the date for, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, you will be able to file only on May 26. As from May 26, hopefully, uh, people will be able to file. So it has to reach the up as from May 26 and after, not before, okay? But the form oh. itself should come out within the next one week or so, but the form has not come out yet because it's a different EAD form, that's what they say. Unless they don't change it, then we'll use the same, but they say they're going to come up with a new one. Let us see, okay? All right. Awesome. But if you need help, I, I, uh, like I said, we're not charging much for those. We'll be glad to help you. 510-742-5887. Let me take another call. This is Shapra. Are you live on air? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey, uh, I would like to speak to Mr. Shah. Yeah, this is Shah. You're live on air. Oh, hi. Sir. Hello, sir. I just wanted uh, just some information. Like, What is your website ID? You've been telling so many times. Uh, so much information to check on your website, but I could not get uh, uh, the, the, web, the website is, you can type short to Rally Law, or short is S-P-L-G-P-C.com, Sharp Rally Law Group, PC.com, or S-P-L-G-P-C.com. The website is Pirali Law also, but the S-P-L-G-P-C will go on this website, okay? Okay. Or you can just Thank type you. my name, Sharp Rally, S H A H. P E E R A L L Y. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, you can check. There's a lot of information there, but we have different different websites, including our blog, Immigration Legal Blog. So okay. you can go ahead and check. We we have a lot of good information there. Okay. Okay. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Let me take another caller. This is Shapra. You're live on air. Yes. Hi. I had a question uh, regarding uh, my brother, who's physically handicapped and uh, is dependent on my parents, who are green card holders. Um, yes. and he's over the age of 21. Is there any mm -hmm. special status or, um, uh, you know, um, yeah. category in which he can apply that he can get his green card faster? Unfortunately, I, I, there's no real provisions. I've tried that before. I don't know if there's anything they have amended so far. But um, you might want to request what we call a humanitarian ground uh, visa, it's like uh -huh. a visa visa, which is unlimited, that allows them to come and stay with your parents. But to be honest with you, it's kind of a 50-50. It can get approved or not get approved, so it all depends on the situation. So, no, there's no special provision. The best is to get the green card for your parents, and then when you apply, you kind of mention his his disability and hope that they will consider this. But there's no real, um, unfortunately... So we did apply for the green card last year? Uh, but the problem mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, uh, it, it will take a lot of years, and my parents yeah. are really old, and they can't take care of him by themselves anymore. I know, and so, so that's I know, you that's know, very sad. Uh, yeah. That is the problem, actually. Yeah. But try the humanitarian go, uh, ground uh, visa, which is uh, like the same as a B1, B2, but uh -huh. that is kind of unlimited. You can try that, but honestly, um, I've tried this before personally for a case, but I failed, so... I don't want to give you false hope, but you can try it, okay? Okay, okay. thank you so much. Good luck okay. to you. You're Thanks. welcome. Let, let me take another caller. Good luck. Uh, this is Shapra. You're live on air. Hello? Hello? I think we have the caller. We love the caller. This is Shapra. You're live on air. Hello? Hi, Hi, Hi Mr. Shah. So um, I have Hi. one question, maybe it's a simple question. Um, after spending five years in U.S. on H-1, if I go back mm -hmm. and spend one year in India mm -hmm. um, and, and come back on the same visa, can I stay for six more years? or? No, you will have to go to the quota again to get six more years, but yet you can come back and use a one year. Um, in order for you to benefit for that six more years, they will ask you to go to the quota again. Uh, the other option is to have an I-140 approved, and when you come back, you can just keep enjoying it until you get uh, a green card. But no, unfortunately, you'll have to reapply under the new new quota, and then you can benefit from that six years. But you have to stay outside for one year. Okay. okay? Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Good luck to you. You're welcome. Let me take another caller. This is Shapra. You're live in here. Hi, Shah. Uh, this is Raj. I just wanted to check uh, with you. 
uh, regarding EB3 to EB2 portability. Mm-hmm. Uh, like uh, we like if we do EB3 to EB2 portability, and if my children are about 21, is there any mm-hmm. issue? Well, some of the until the I-45 is filed, technically they are yeah, not yeah, going to be protected. Yeah, under EBC, I filed my I-485 in 2007, and they were under 21 at that time. Okay, and how old are they right now? Uh, 21 plus or 25 plus? 25 plus. Um, I don't know the answer right now. As far as I know, you should be able to benefit because it goes by the term of the I-45 date file. But the problem, the Child Status Protection Act is so complicated that they probably didn't provide for that, so there's no direct answer on that. Uh, I um, Let me check into it and I'll let you know, but as far as I know, you sh- they should be protected because that I-45 was filed a long time ago, and as soon as you file it, it should clear them. But the problem is that by refiling the new portability, they might change the date. Uh, but the priority date stays the same. But unfortunately, when did you file the I-45? Uh, for I, and that EB-3, it was filed uh, in 2007. 2007? Yeah, uh, in the August uh, 2007, yeah. right? Yeah. And at that time, they were, they were uh, under They were 21. under 18, uh, 19 under so, Under 21, so minus basically seven years almost. I think they should be okay, but I'm not sure, so I don't want you to take the risk. But I'm sh- I'm pretty sure they because minus seven years, they should be able to bring them to like 15 years old. They should be able to benefit from it. But unfortunately, I have never done a situation of Child Status Protection Act based on that one. I need to do some research on that one. But that's a very good question because always I encourage people to do EB2 and port it, but what happens to the children? Um, from my perspective, at this point, I think you, the answer is yes, they should be able to get the green card, but don't take the risk. Just double check first, and then you do that, okay? So, uh, will you be able to do research, and I can call you later? Uh, let me do the research, and I'll let you know. Um, I'm pretty sure there's no straight answer on this, but I will figure. I will try to figure it out for you. As far as I know, the the... the the Child Status Protection Act attaches when the I-45 is filed. And that's seven years, uh, not seven years, I think six years, right? That's since 2007. It has been uh, more than six years now. So it should minus it from the 21, what they are 21 now. But uh, oh, let me check. Give me a like this one week. I'll, I'll find an answer for you, okay? Okay. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you. Let me take one more caller. This is Shapra. You're live on air. Mr. Shah, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. What can I do for you? Great, great, show, great show on immigration. I really appreciate the information that you are sharing with the listeners. Thank you, thank you. Thank I'm, you so I'm calling. So. I'm uh, your your radio program is being heard uh, widespread, and I'm calling you from Canada. Oh, thank you, thank you. So you're listening in Canada. Congratulations. Absolutely, there are a lot of Canadian uh, citizens and residents who are looking to immigrate or come and live or work in U.S., and then they listen to you. Oh, thank you. That's nice to hear and people are listening to you. Sure. And I will ask you a relevant question uh, regarding that. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there something yes. called NAFTA visa? Do you do NAFTA visas? Yes, the TN visa, yes. Yeah, of course. Yes. This is uh, one of the yes. easiest visas, actually. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. do you do you know uh, what is the requirement for a NAFTA visa application for a category called management consultant? Management consultant, I it has to be forming part in the, I don't know the appendix by heart, but you have to look into the NAFTA appendix. If that person falls into a category which is under that appendix, uh, the requirements are not high actually to do a TN visa. You just have to have a letter of employment and then you go at the border and you pay the fee and you, you get in. Uh, the only problem with the TN visa, it doesn't lead to a green card, but I know a lot of people who live on that visa for 10, 15 years. So it's a very good visa actually, NAFTA for Mexico and Canada. But uh, on what field you're seeing management consultant, are you in IT? Are you talking to people in IT or not IT, things like that? No, no, this is not for me. This is for one of my clients who is a consultant, actually, in one of the oh, okay. uh, accounting firms. 
So they okay. have uh, more than five years' experience working as a consultant, looking at different projects for their own clients. Uh, oh. The account accountancy and you know just the consulting. Oh, uh, accounting! So uh, accounting, I think, is included in that. Accounting is included. Accountants are included in that, as far as, far as I remember. Uh, but as long as we can, they are in a position which is under the NAFTA, and they are basically <coughs> uh, have a job offer. Yes. Just a letter of employment is good enough usually to get this visa. And you pretty much file everything at the border. You pay the fee. Uh, I think the fee is like $180, something like that. No, and no, it is cheaper. Actually, it's cheaper. It's only about $50. Uh, exactly. It's cheaper than yeah. anything. So usually I don't, I just, I don't even, you know, honestly, I tell people you don't even need a lawyer to do that. I help people. Sometimes they don't like to do it on their own. Because it's so easy, just a letter, you just move on. But some people prefer to 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 get it done professionally, and uh, and uh, that's why I don't even know the fee. Uh, yeah, but in, in, in some categories, done. in some categories, just like the management consulting, the interpretation of the management consulting contract or the category itself is is open to different versions of their how they view it. That is why a consultant or, ma or like a immigration lawyer actually might be needed to clarify the role of a consultant and establish that it really is a consultant because a lot of people can say they are consulting but they may not mm -hmm. be a consultant at all so that's what that's, on, that's, a, on a on a separate note i just it, wanted to like let you, know you and other, <laughs> other listeners be aware that a lot of people in california and uh, entire us as, as well if you have undocumented aliens who have had at least one year of legal stay in U.S., maybe they are on amnesty or 81 scheme or refugee or asylum or something. If they have education and experience, they can directly apply to immigrate from Canada, from U.S. itself. They don't have to go back to India. I just wanted to let you know and everybody else know. Yeah, that's a that's a very important point you put. You know, especially U.S. gives so much hard time to some people just to come uh, to stay here while Canada is opening. Though personally, I love Canada. I have a lot, all, pretty much all my family out there. I just uh, I, I'm so used now to California and the heat here, but I would love to live there. And I, I tell people all the time, life is good there. If you get a chance to go, you should take advantage of it. And, and, now, uh, and, now, is the, and now is the chance. There's a, there's a program called Express Entry Open, and Canada is accepting applications, especially for techies, yeah, I, uh, people who have bachelor's education and, and at least only one year experience. That is all is required. And I'm I'm here to help uh, you and other other listeners who are listening. My name is Amar Jot, and my website is immigrationteacher.org. They can type immigrationteacher.org, and they will see all the information. And uh, beauty great. is they can fill this information on their own. They don't need a lawyer. They don't need me. They don't need somebody else. They can go online, fill up the application, and the government of Canada is promising immigration within six months. By the way. If they are ex yeah. accepted, but that's a and that's a lottery system, right? So it's a lottery. No, it is right? not a lottery so system. No, 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 no. It is not a lottery system. You okay. you apply depending on how many points you get. It's a point system. America does not have a system like points here. If you no, have sufficient points, you are guaranteed yeah. to be picked and then and placed for processing. The beauty I is that within should. three years of having a PR card, you will get a Canadian passport, which you can use yeah. to go and. Let's, we, maybe we should discuss that more. Uh, Amarjad, um, the show is finishing, but thank you so much for listening in Canada. So for people who want to go there, so you can they can contact you. So ladies and gentlemen, we're closing the show now. There's only one minute left. I wanted to thank Liz, and anything you heard me today say is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on information provided. And also, we help people on debt settlement. For people who have judgment against them, people who have credit card loans, and debts and uh, any kind of second mortgage they want to get rid of them check your debt settlement attorney.com your debt settlement attorney.com and uh, if you need help on immigration feel free to call our office 510-742-5887 i thank you all for all the callers and i, th I thank the callers for uh, for listening in canada and other countries i know a lot of people all around the world call us and i thank them for listening Keep checking. Check our website, splgpc.com. Take care. I'll be back on Thursday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And bye-bye. Take care. Good luck to all of you, and I wish you all the best. And hopefully things get better in the world. And bye-bye. Uh, Peace out to everybody. Thank you.